Hello people, in this video we want to look at uh, antigenic subtypes, okay, and antigenic variation, okay, very very important for the exam, antigenic variation has been asked so many times, <clears throat> this is one of the top priority for you in microbiology, virology, okay, so just let's take a recap of what we have seen so far, we started off with influenza, we looked at uh, influenza epidemiology, we saw that in 2009-2010, there was a pandemic of H1N1 swine flu. In 2014, there was H3N2 in Pondicherry. So, there are a lot of deaths annually, lacks of deaths actually. This is mainly because of the antigenic variation. That is why this question, antigenic variation, they ask very often in the exam. Now, uh, these actually influenza virus, they affect uh, swines and uh, birds more. Birds are actually the primary reservoir of influenza virus, okay. And they also affect humans. Humans not much. Birds and swines more. Then what else we saw? We saw the clinical features of this influenza virus. Incubation period is just a few hours. Let's say around 3 days. 1 to 3 days. <clears throat> so here the, in uncomplicated influenza that be flu syndrome. More like a, a common cold, upper respiratory tract problems, asymptomatic, less fever and then it progresses to high fever. Complications will be like pneumonia. Then you can have uh, pneumonia actually which is caused by secondary bacterial infection because of staphylococci, pneumococci, haemophilus influenza bacteria etc. Then there can be other pulmonary complications like COPD, exacerbation of uh, chronic bronchitis and asthma. There can be RACE syndrome that is the fatty degeneration of the liver and the encephalopathy. This usually affects children and adolescents. So, uh, age group is 2 to 16 years. It can be fatal in 10 to 40 percent people. Moving on. We saw the treatment for influenza. Influenza is treated with uh, Oseltamivir. Oseltamivir is actually neuraminidase inhibitor. It is also called as Tamiflu. This drug comes with the name Tamiflu. Yeah, it is taken for 5 days. Okay, You also have an alternative Zenamivir. Zenamivir, okay. Now, um, the matrix protein M2 inhibitors are also there like uh, Rimantadine and Amantadine, okay. Rimantadine, Amantadine, however, uh, the uh, virus have become resistant to this, they are saying. So, this is the drug we saw. Tamiflu, Oseltamivir phosphate. We saw the classification of the virus. It is an orthomyxovirus. It's a myxovirus. It is going to cause hemagglutination. It is an orthomyxovirus. It has eight, ortho is eight, right? Eight segments of the single-stranded RNA are present. Uh, what else? Orthomyxovirus, the main thing you have to know is they have segmented RNA. The replication of the RNA is in the nucleus. This is important because it is the only uh, th unique things that it has. It is the replication of the RNA happens in the nucleus of the host. Now coming to the morphology, we saw that uh, it is spherical. It has helical symmetry of the capsid. Capsid has helical symmetry. When you say helical symmetry, wait. I can't actually see any helical symmetry here of the capsid anyways. So now coming to the <clears throat> RNA, the RNA has 8 segments, it is single stranded negative sense RNA, negative sense it is, single stranded, it has 8 segments, the site of replication of the RNA is the nucleus, the viral proteins, let's come to the viral proteins now, so you should know the protein names guys, there are 8 structural proteins and there are uh, 2 non-structural proteins, 8 structural proteins, we have PB1, PB2, PA, okay, then you have NP, matrix proteins you have M1, M2, M1, M2 is very clearly visible here, M1 is this one, which is the shell and M2 is going to be the ion channel, HA and NA are also there, HA is the hemagglutinin, and then Na is a neuraminidase. These are glycoproteins which are embedded in the lipid envelope. Not embedded, they are inserted into the lipid envelope. Okay. Non-structural proteins, you have NS1 and NS2. Now coming to the envelope, 
it has this ha and na ha is triangle shaped na is mushroom shaped ha is going to agglutinate our uh, blood correct heme agglutination it will do na will actually help the virus to pass through the mucin layer and respiratory tract it actually reverses the heme agglutination it causes elution that is why the virus probably can pass now what about this ns1 ns2 and other proteins what they do let's revise that also because this is important this virus influenza virus itself is so important for the exam so let's just revise everything here pb1 pb2 pa they help in the rna transcription replication np is the nucleoprotein so it gives rise to the nucleocapsid with helical symmetry matrix protein m1 is the shell m2 is the ion channel then ns1 non structural protein these are going to help in ns1 is actually interferon antagonist it inhibits the pre mrna splicing ns2 will help in the export of molecules across the nucleus is it clear or it became too much for you is it okay shall we continue so thanks for uh, listening to everything in a revision we saw that the seventh rna segment codes for the matrix protein m1 is the shell and m2 is the ion channel so now we are looking to the actual part of this video antigenic subtypes nomenclature and antigenic variation so first let us look at the subtypes see first of all there are three genera okay a b and c based on the rnp and the m protein what is rnp protein rnp is nothing but the nucleo protein correct go here and check what rnp is rnp i think is this np only np only is rnp correct hold on that's right np is the nucleo protein it's the major capsid protein it is associated to form the rnp that is the ribo nucleo protein or the nucleocapsid with helical symmetry so they're saying the nucleocapsid has helical symmetry okay this na right this new neuraminidase is actually sialidase 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 okay so it's written here in this diagram that's why i'm adding it here neuraminidase is sialidase okay so now let's go back to the antigenic subtypes so we saw that based on the rnp and the m protein you have a b c influenza influenza a influenza b and influenza c these are the three genera of influenza further each genera has lot of subtypes based on the ha and the na antigens ha is what heme agglutinin and the neuraminidase antigens what is ha it is triangular shaped peplomer it is uh, binds it binds to the mucin receptors or the sialic acid receptors on rbc so it will cause clumping of rbc to cause hemagglutination it also binds to the respiratory epithelial cells now na is nothing but neuraminidase it is mushroom shaped peplomer it is actually uh, a sialidase enzyme so it will degrade the sialic acid receptors so it will actually cause reversal of hemagglutination so na is opposite of ha na will cause reversal of hemagglutination which is called as elution here what happens the viral particles are going to get uh, released and it, they are going to pass through the mucin layer of the respiratory tract and they will reach the target epithelial cells so the virus are going to get released you no know, from this agglutination and from the cell surfaces and they will be able to penetrate now let us come to the antigenic subtypes this is what we have come here for this video so we have uh, 16 uh, there are six h subtypes there are 16 of them okay so h1 to h16 there are h1 to h16 
and in n1 n there are nine types n1 to n9 okay most of these subtypes they affect uh, animals and birds in uh, the ones that infect humans no h1 h2 h3 h5 and n1 and n2 n1 and n2 you can remember right n1 and n2 you have already seen in that epidemiology h1 h2 h3 also we have seen in the epidemiology if you remember just go back to the epidemiology and see here h1 is there h2 is there h3 is there h5 we didn't mention then you have n1 and n2 n1 and n2 correct human importance only those influenza b and c also have subtypes but they are not designated so we are going to say thank god let's move on to antigenic variation now how many people are awake everybody is awake right very good so let's move on to antigenic variation because it is very important for the exam correct uh, antigenic variation uh, is because of the change in the ha and the na peplomia here you have antigenic drift and antigenic shift so let us look at antigenic drift and antigenic shift say antigenic drift antigenic shift this drift guys it is very small okay it is a minor change let's make it green antigenic shift uh, uh, drift 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 is a small thing it's a point mutation mutation uh, in this gene so what will happen if there's a point mutation in this gene there is amino acid sequence will change now how will it help the virus the virus can escape the host immune now what happens uh, to become epidemiologically important more mutations are required okay now this kind of drift drift is seen in both influenza a and b types this results in minor epidemic only okay in minor epidemic only it will result so antigenic drift you no know, this occurs every 2 to 3 years and it will result in epidemic and that to a minor epidemic where a shift you no know, shift is a big thing in shift what happens there is genetic reassortment between different genomes of influenza virus so two influenza virus or two or three or more influenza virus which are infecting the same host cell they come together and they become, they become of a new strain of virus so this is a genetic reassortment you should know this word within a host cell two three viruses come they form of one new strain of virus this is shift antigenic shift shift is more dangerous say shift is more dangerous antigenic shift is more dangerous it's major genetic reassortment okay so here what happens there is major change it is abrupt there is discontinuous variation discontinuous variation in the surface protein this occurs only in influenza a it results in what pandemic it's a major change it will result in pandemic or major epidemic and in 2009 10 what happened right that swine flu it is an example of antigenic shift remember and this occurs every 10 to 20 years so the next one every 10 years 20 years you'll have this major uh, uh, epidemic or pandemic so remember so where were we here so antigenic shift we have finished now let's take a review of what we have seen so far in this video we saw only two slides new slides antigenic subtypes and nomenclature you should know that there are 16 h subtypes and 9 n subtypes how many subtypes say 16 h and in n there are 9 h1 to h16 n1 to n9 human importance are h1 h2 h3 h5 n1 n2 very good and um, in uh, influenza b and c not much of uh, they have not designated these subtypes also remember there are three genera genera right there are three genera a b c subtypes are so many genera is based on the nucleoprotein and the matrix protein however the subtypes are because of the hemagglutinin and new and uh, what is that Nur amini des, nur amini des antigen. Okay, very good. So there is antigenic drift, which is minor point mutation occurs in both influenza A and B. Here the amino acid sequence will change. Virus can escape the host's immune. It results in minor epidemics and it occurs every two to three years. Years. Okay, so two to three years. Every two to three years, you will have an antigenic drift. 
Coming to antigenic shift, it is a genetic reassortment. Two, three viruses inside the host cell, they will combine <clears throat> and form a new strain of the virus itself and this is a major change. There is discontinuous variation of the surface protein. It occurs only in influenza A virus. This results in pandemics. Example, in 2009-10, we had the swine flu H1N1. Sorry, that was because of antigenic shift. This occurs every 10 to 20 years. So, if they ask you antigenic shift, drift, antigenic variation in the exam, you will be writing all this and you should be getting good marks. R draw off this diagram also. So that, there's the diagram guys, morphology, yeah, morphology, yeah, here. Yeah. This diagram, if you draw now, they will understand what you're talking about because this HA and NA are glycoproteins which are inserted into the envelope. <coughs> HA and NA decide the subtype, matrix proteins and the nucleoprotein decide the Genome, correct? Okay. So, I think we can wind up this video. What say guys? So, in this video, you understood the antigenic um, subtypes and antigenic variation. Okay. See you for now. Bye-bye.